Good morning and welcome to the Crackpot Breakfast. I'm Canadian artist Brian Lowry. What are we having for breakfast today? We're having a Sprite and orange juice. Sprite and orange juice. A uh, poor man samosa. Is it the new Aquaman samosa? We we're washing. We we're washing down toasted tomato sandwiches. On rye bread. Mmm. So. Margarine, mayo, beef steak, tomato, lettuce. Oh, what a medley of vegetables and heart disease. Um, what's going on this week? Um, Larry Wilmore this weekend. Did the White House Correspondence Dinner, Obama's last White House Correspondence Dinner, and Larry Wilmore was the the comic guest, and he he fucking nailed it. He was really good, and I was so happy for him because Larry's had a couple of bittersweet years. Larry Wilmore was a comedian. He used to be a correspondent on uh, the Daily Show. And then he got his own show. He got Stephen Colbert's spot, which was huge, because Stephen Colbert's show was just, oh my God, so good. People who just watch him now on CBS, and what was the David Letterman spot, if you didn't watch the Colbert Report, you don't understand, like, nighttime television, the, the late night talk shows are not very good. They're they're not funny, and uh, occasionally they'll do something funny, but in general, they're just a boring mess. And the Colbert Report was something different. That that character that Stephen Colbert developed, which was this kind of lunatic, conservative jackass, made the interview so much fun, made the show so much fun, and. Now he has this watered down, fucking boring talk show that's exactly like all the rest of them. So Larry Wilmer got his spot, but he clearly didn't get the same notoriety and hype and reaction out of people that Colbert did. Um, and I think that's because, uh, well, and, and in the same breath, the Trevor Noah version of, of The Daily Show doesn't really have the same oomph as uh, the Jon Stewart one did. It's still a great show. I think Trevor Noah's hilarious. I think he's got great writers, but um, The Daily Show and The Colbert Report would get quoted and would get would get quoted by other stations they like other news sources would cite things that they said nobody really does that anymore nobody cites what the daily show says now not really um or at least not to the extent that it did when john stewart was on it's too bad because i think the daily show now is very funny i think they're doing a great job but the, the comedy show that's making the most impact and having the most effect on people is clearly John Oliver. John, John Oliver's HBO show. And he, again, another correspondent from The Daily Show. Um, his HBO show is the one that's getting retweeted and the one that's getting quoted. And like he's having this huge effect on, on people. His, his satire, his, his, his humor... His jokes are having this big ripple effect, whereas The Daily Show and and the, the Nightly Show kind of, they're just on. They're just another funny thing that's on. Um, so yeah, to see what Larry Wilmore do the White House Correspondence Dinner and nailed it. That was amazing. He did a really good job. Uh, go look it up on YouTube. And Barack Obama's leaving. I think he's got seven months left. Anybody who knows me knows I I love Barack Obama. I'm gonna miss him. 
I loved him as a president because to me, he he seemed like a real person. Like he has passion and imagination. Most, like 99% of politicians when they talk, I just hear a parrot for military and industry. Just, that's all I hear. Just, Bruh. Our brave men and women. Bruh. Wall Street does more good than evil. Bruh. Polly, what a lobbyist. Like, that's, you know, and I'm not saying politicians can't inspire or can't affect people. Clearly they can. But I mean, at the core, their message is usually go military. Industry is more better than worse. And uh, capitalism and God and the Bible and all that other shit, man. <sighs> and Barack Obama sounded the least like that. And if you get the chance, check out his half an hour. At the White House Correspondents Dinner. Holy shit was he funny. And not just this year. Every year he's done it. Go on YouTube, look up Barack Obama. White House Correspondents Dinner. My God, that man is so funny and smart and sexy. and I just fucking love Barack Obama so much. And look, we all kind of know Hillary Clinton's going to be the next president. Hillary Clinton is many things to many people. Okay? But passion and imagination, they checked out of her years ago. Okay? Sorry. I had to go kill a spider. I kill spiders. I kill spiders. I kill mosquitoes. Ants, ticks, teenage runaways, basically anything with a pulse that comes into my house uninvited, I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to murder. I killed a spider, now it's gonna rain. <gasps> it's raining already. What else do I kill? I don't kill ladybugs or potato bugs. Grasshoppers I let go. Because I don't usually find them in my house. I don't think I've ever found a ladybug in my house. They're cute. I actually have no beef with spiders. But every time my wife sees one, she has a mental breakdown. Total fucking collapse. Every time. He's like, no! Nah! Little fucking. So I have to kill him when I see them. Because if she sees them, oh my god, it's the end of the fucking world. She sprays raid everywhere. I'm dying. I know I'm going to die of like some weird raid induced death. She won't touch him. I squish him. I usually get a Kleenex and squish him. And Sorry to all the spider enthusiasts out there, but I kill them. This week I sold my 73rd painting. I started painting when I'm when I was 37. I'm 40 now. I know. I know you're looking at me like Ryan. You're 40, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't let my full head of hair fool you. <laughs> no, I've been going bald since high school. So I started painting when I was 37, I'm 40 now, and to date I've sold 73 of the paintings I've made. I only charge $50 for my paintings, and almost all of them are uh, 16 inches by 20 inches on a canvas wrap uh, frame. And uh, I've been told that the 
you know, charging fifty dollars for paintings, nobody's ever going to take me seriously. I don't need them to take me seriously. I want them to take my paintings home. So I sold seventy three of them, which that's pretty fucking good. That's I I feel like a good artist today. Most days I don't feel like a good artist. Most days I don't feel like a good artist, even though I only charge fifty dollars for my paintings. Because that's how much I would want to pay. If I was in a store, or if I saw a painting online, I'd be like, how much is that? I love that. Oh my God, how much is that? Everything over $50, that's art, I kind of go, hmm, maybe. <laughs> if it's $50, I just go, well, of course I'll buy that. I can scrounge $50 together. If there's something that I want, that's a book, a movie. If it's fifty dollars or less, an impulse buy, pff, I don't even think about it. I just buy it. Anything over fifty bucks, I think. Do I really want it? Then I kind of analyze it in my head. Fifty dollars, I don't analyze. I just go, I want this thing. How much is it? Fifty bucks sold. Which works out. This guy in Scotland, he was redecorating his house. He goes, I wanted to buy a few paintings. I found your uh, web store, the store you have on the internets. And he goes, the paintings are 50 bucks each. Why? And, and I said, because I, I hope you'll buy a bunch of them. He did, he bought seven. I have seven paintings in Scotland. I have three in Australia. I have two in Washington State. I got one in Texas. One in Nevada. I got one in Germany. In Deutschland. 73 of them are out in the world doing their thing. And some days I feel like a good artist. I didn't feel like a good artist yesterday. Um, normally if I'm doing a, a comic strip or just sketch work. Um, sketch work, I usually just scan into my computer and then I uh, detail it a little bit with uh, some software. Um, but my wife and I were at Michael's store and they were selling these old, uh, you know, digital sketch pads. So it's like a sketch pad you draw and then the drawing goes into the, into your computer software and, uh, they were, they were the older models. Um, but yeah, they were on for cheap, so my wife was like, why don't you get that? And then you can just do your drawings right in your laptop. You don't have to scan everything. And I, I took that as a compliment, because I'm like, oh, she she likes my work. You know, she thinks I should do more of it. So the first thing I sketched was um, a picture of her with Nathan Fillion and me off to the side sulking. So I, said, I sent it to her, I emailed it to her, and I went, hey, what'd you think of that drawing? And she goes, yeah, the, the girl and the, there was you, you know, looking grumpy. And, uh, well, here's what the picture looked like. And the story behind that piece was, a few years ago, we went to, Fan Expo in Toronto. Fan Expo is a, a convention of nerds and weirdos that like movies and comic books and video games and all that awkward nerd shit. And uh, normally I don't go to those. She goes to them quite often. Normally, I don't go to conventions because they hose you on everything. Everything there costs a crazy amount of money. And, uh, I don't know. Like, I like it. It's just, <coughs> these conventions usually last four days. So, you go the one day. You see all the stuff, and then that's it. But what we did a few years ago was we went to all four days.
the first day was amazing. You go and you look at all the cool artwork and all these great shirts and toys and video games and so much shit. It's just sensory overload. That's amazing. So that's the Thursday. You go the Friday. Oh wait, was it open Friday? So yeah, that's the first day. The second day you go, that's when everybody goes. You can't fucking move and it's just hundreds of people and you just and you feel crowded and you fucking I was sneaking treats. You're not supposed to bring in food. I brought in food. So I'm walking around eating fucking Cracker Jack and shit. Drinking warm sodas out of my bag. Spilling shit everywhere like an asshole. And then the third day, you go and it's just you know, there's not that many. Usually on that day, people get pictures with celebrities. You know, you get the picture with the Emperor from Star Wars for like a hundred bucks. Or, you know, you get your photo with that guy from the serial killer movie you liked for like 50 bucks. But Jen went that year and she, um, she got a bobblehead of, a bobblehead's like a cardboard cutout action figure in a, in a little plastic case of Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion was the star of the TV show Firefly and its subsequent film Serenity and my wife fucking loves that guy. Just loves him. And she watches him now on Castle and he can do no wrong. She just adores him. So we went to get her bobblehead signed, and that was sixty bucks. And uh, she she it was so oh she's so nervous, and he signed it. And um, and then the next day she uh, they had a photo shoot, so they were gonna take a picture of her. And as we're standing in line for like three fucking hours, oh my god, it's going out of my mind. So bored. Um, but yeah, and we're like two minutes away from her getting her picture done. And she goes, well, here's what I want the picture to be. You standing off to the side, sulking, while him and I are in an embrace. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And I wasn't trying to be mean to her or shitty. It's just, like I said, it was the third day burnout from just so many people and crowds and I just stood in line for three fucking hours and I was like I just I just wanna <laughs> go I'm so fucking done with seeing people dressed as X-Men and you know <laughs> that's why I normally don't go to that shit cause it's great for a few hours but then it's just like oh look the guy from The Walking Dead and then you're getting a slice of pizza and you're like Oh, it's the guy from The Walking Dead. Who gives a shit? <laughs> and I know I'm an artist, so I'm supposed I'm supposed to care about this shit, but I don't. I don't know. I do and I don't. Like for some people the the convention is the experience. But to me it's not. The convention is a way to hose people who are into the experience of pop culture and all its subsequent facets. And I'm not saying I didn't have a good time. I had a great time. But by the third day, you just fucking burnt out on it. You know what I mean? You're just like, I get it. So I said, no, I don't want to pose like that. You go pose with them. So she went and posed with them, but she didn't like her smile in the picture. And she was so glad to meet him, but. You know, she just, she felt weird that I didn't want to do that picture or whatever. I don't know. So I thought the first thing I'll do on my digital sketch pad was draw the photograph that she wanted. 
And she didn't even recognize herself on it. She didn't even... So, I'm a shitty artist. I suck. Did a new painting this week. And it looks like this. <laughs> huh? I know, right? I am a good artist. <laughs>